There's an important difference between surrender and just plain quitting. To give up is to throw our hands up in the air and say, there's no hope, I'm dead, when diagnosed with a terminal illness. To surrender is to choose the treatments that feel right and, if they don't work, to accept that our time here is limited. When we give up, we deny the life we have. When we surrender, we accept it just as it is. To be a victim of disease is to give up, but to see that we always have choices in every situation is surrender. To turn away from the situation is to give up. To turn into it is surrender. E.K.R. God was shrewd. My head was not affected by my strokes. Talk about a way to teach lessons. I can't use my left leg and arm, but I can talk and I can think. Many times people lose function on the whole left side, including the ability to speak well. But not me. From the neck up I'm completely intact and fine. Yet the left side of my body is paralyzed, which is why I call my stroke paradoxical. There's no mental impact, but the left side of my body, the feminine side, is underdeveloped. The feminine side is the side that receives Pink is considered a feminine color, and it's no accident that I hate it, but now I'm trying to learn to appreciate it. I must work on receiving, on learning to say thank you. I must learn patience and surrender. Throughout my life I have given and given, but never learned to receive. This is my lesson now, learning to receive love, receive care, to be nurtured rather than nurturing. I realized I had a big stone wall around my heart. It was designed to protect me from hurt, but it also kept the love out. End EKR. Many people have difficulty submitting positively even in life's little situations. We probably all know people who, even at a lecture, feel they must stand up and challenge the speaker. I have to set things straight, they might say the speaker was wrong. People like this don't get the idea of just being a listener and receiver. They do not realize they don't have to disagree. They don't have to set everyone straight. Instead, they could give the speaker a chance to present the material and, perhaps, change their mind a little. After they experience the material as a whole, if they said, I disagree with it, or I won't listen to this speaker again, that would be fine. But if you start disagreeing right away, you don't allow yourself to surrender into receiving and learning. Some believe that even to listen to what someone else has to say means losing a fight. The truth is, to have listened and listened carefully would have been a brief, positive surrender to someone else's point of view, which could be incorporated into their own, investigated further, or set aside. A maitre d' at a well-known restaurant tells how customers come in and say, I want to try your famous Caesar salad, but with plain oil and vinegar. Or, I want your chicken special, only grilled, not broiled, and without the sauce. This maitre d' said, What we bring to the meal is our unique way of cooking and presenting it. If you don't receive it as we present it, you're missing the very thing our chef does so well. I understand when someone has had it once, and maybe then would like it with less sauce, or has real dietary restrictions, but many times they just don't give us a chance to present it our way. We have all become so very controlling. We've forgotten what it's like to be students and to sit at the feet of others. We don't know how to receive other ideas and experiences, even if only for a brief while, even the little things in life. Refusing to accept situations we cannot change exhausts us, strips us of our power and peace of mind. We take back our power and regain peace of mind when we let things be as they are. We are, in effect, saying, I am going to be happy right now. I'm not going to put it off. 
Refusing to surrender, on the other hand, is the same as saying, I can't possibly be happy until the conditions change. No way, no how. Perhaps new conditions would be more pleasurable, but the conditions may never change, which makes us victims of their not changing. To say, I will only be peaceful if such and such happens, is pretty limiting. Is the situation you imagine really the only good one? Aren't there many other circumstances and situations that would bring peace, some of which you haven't even thought of? I'm not talking about accepting everything that happens. If you don't like the television show you're watching, you don't have to surrender to it. Change the channel. If you don't like your job, look for a new one. Fix your car if you think it rattles too much. If you're unhappy with a situation that could be corrected, find your power and make the correction. I'm talking about situations we have decided are insurmountable obstacles to happiness. We insist that we absolutely cannot be happy unless these situations change, but they can't be. If you've had a bad childhood, you can't go back and make it a happy one. If someone you love does not return your love, you can't force love. If you have cancer right now, you are not cancer-free at this moment. In these situations, we can be as unhappy as unhappy can be, but we will never change the facts. Surrendering into life as it is can be the quickest and most powerful way to get the lesson out of the situation. You can't change your bad childhood, but you can have a good life. You can't make someone love you but you can stop wasting your time and energy on him or her. You can't wave a magic wand and make your cancer disappear, but that doesn't mean life is over. DK A diabetic man named Brian was hospitalized for an, an infection in his right leg. The 50-year-old corporate manager was wild with fear and filled with anger because the doctors told him that his leg might have to be amputated. Brian first needed permission to fully feel everything, then to let all those feelings out. When he had done that, I asked, Can you surrender into the situation as it is? At first, Brian saw nothing beneficial in this idea. He was angry that I had even brought it up. I continued, however, saying, The horrible possibility that you may lose your leg is constantly on your mind. It's dominating your thoughts. It's filling you with fear and anger. Why not think about it for a while? Be with it. Then let it be. If you're going to lose your leg, you're going to lose your leg. Thinking about it, pretending that you are not thinking about it, or refusing even to talk about it isn't going to make it happen or not happen. So if I make peace with losing my leg, if I completely surrender, will it be saved? I reminded him that deep spiritual work is deep spiritual work. We can't bargain with it. We can't say, if I'm spiritual enough, will I get the prize? If Brian surrendered to the idea of losing his leg, he might still lose it. But this possible leg amputation was a demon holding him hostage. Along with his happiness and his ability to grow from the situation, the idea of losing his leg was so terrifying he couldn't think about it right away. But when he was finally able to look at the situation with his feelings and wonder, I might lose my leg, what would it be like if I did? Brian realized that he would get through. He would get an artificial leg and life would continue. Once he was through to the other side of surrender, he found some peace. He relaxed into the situation helping his body heal and move in whatever direction he was supposed to. Luckily, his leg responded well to treatment, and he was saved. Looking back, though, Brian says that the most amazing part of the horrible situation was that when he finally surrendered to the worst possible scenario, he found peace. End DK We insist that we can't possibly be happy until tomorrow when things change. But if happiness is possible tomorrow, it is also possible today. 
If love is possible tomorrow, it is possible today. We can find healing even if nothing changes. To surrender to life as is can miraculously transform situations. It is in this surrender that we are able to receive. The universe gives us the tools to fulfill our destinies when we let things be. When is the right time to surrender? In what situations? Every day, every moment, and every situation is an opportunity for surrender. We surrender to a force bigger than we are when we are born and again when we die. Between life and death, we get lost because we forget to surrender. If something should be changed and you have the power to change it, go ahead. But learn to recognize the situations that cannot be changed. They are the times when we feel as if we are bailing against the tide, when we struggle and are afraid. These are the times when we must accept and surrender, or our struggle consumes us. If you don't feel at peace, it's time to surrender. If life doesn't flow, it's time to surrender. If you feel that you're responsible for everything, it's time to surrender. If you want to change what cannot be changed, it's time to surrender. And when you do opt for change, think carefully about exactly what needs to be different and why. Steve, for instance, was unhappy being an accountant because he really wanted to be in the theater. He constantly struggled with himself because he was unwilling to give up the security and certainty of his professional career for the unstable life of the theater. When he finally accepted that he would remain an accountant, someone told him that a theater company was looking for a new chief financial officer. Steve got the job and is now one of the biggest and most successful chief financial officers specializing in Broadway shows. Letting things be instead of constantly struggling to make them happen is a wonderful gift we give to ourselves.